What's going on guys, Seth here from Team Union Seth, here for the final week of power rankings in Season 2 of the RPL. Um, we are joined yet again by Rishu. Yo, final and, week. Feels really bad, man. And this week, filling in for Ocon, we have a guest, coach of the Colorado Crawdons, Dadareth. Surf's up, bruh. Um, so this week included a lot of memeing uh, in the battles. Most of the battles didn't matter a whole lot in terms of standings or playoffs or anything like that. So a lot of teams just kind of went full on meme. Um, and some of the rankings reflect that, some of them don't. Uh, but we're going to move right into it. So for our number 12, uh, unfortunately the Tauber Bischoff's Heim Teddy Ursas had to forfeit their match to the Bougie Cavaliers. Um, so they remain at number 12, going 0-10 for the season. Um, and we're just going to move right past them onto our number 11, which, uh, in Rishu's ranking, remains the Emerald City Espions, uh, because he actually didn't change anything from last week, considering all the memes of the week. Um, and for Ocon, he had the Indiana Infernape. So we'll start with the Espions, um, and I will pull up their game. Yo, so I'm going first. Cool, that's fine. Okay, so like he forgot to meme, which is really disappointing, and it made me really sad. Um, however, there is a bright side to this, right? Um, because when you notice on team preview that his opponent didn't have Rotom, didn't have Clefable, and didn't really have anything even remotely resembling a Tornadus check, as long as he hit all of the inaccurate moves that he had on his Tornadus, which he had a lot of them, uh, he had a really free matchup, and he could have just 6 0 with Tornadus. Um, lo and behold, Tornadus literally was 6 0 the entire team until he missed a move. Uh, and then that was followed up by Tornadus being dead and Jirachi flinching everything, and then he won. Um, so he played fine, but it's really tough to judge his play against all of the other weeks because his opponent wasn't really playing or building to win. Um, so I kind of take it with a grain of salt. His two wins this season were against the Teddy Urzes and a team that wasn't trying. Um, so that that is that is the reason, no, well, it's the truth. That is the reason why I kept him at 11. Um, but it, it is a nice way, if you look at the bright side, it is a nice way to end an otherwise disappointing season. He built and played this team the way I think he originally intended for this team to be built and played, which is something that we haven't seen to this point. So. It is a nice way to end the season. It's encouraging as far as next season goes. We'll see really if he decides to change anything up, assuming he comes back. Um, if he tries to change anything up with his drafting style to try to f make it fit better with his playing and building. Um, because other than that, he, he played solid. So. Eden, your thoughts on the game? Uh, in all honesty, I mean, he kind of said everything I have noted here. The big thing is there really was no Tornadus answer, whether they were memeing or not. Like, that's still something you want to check, being such a fast, such a powerful Mon that's most likely going to be brought. That wasn't brought. There's no way to handle it. Um, when it came to the Emerald City Espions, like, they prepped good, it seems, but they're also fighting against a team who prepped for memes, so we don't really know how good they prepped. Yeah, that's definitely a fair analysis. Um, we're gonna move we right didn't in. See, we didn't even like see four of his mods, like yeah. yeah. So I mean, he had good moves on Tornadus, so that's that's true. Yeah. That is one hundred percent true. Everything that we saw was good. Yeah. But. Uh, innocent until proven guilty. <laughs> um, so we're gonna move on to the Infernames, which Ocon did move down. Now Ocon's rankings uh, directly reflect the actual standings of the league. Um, so he moved the Infernames down uh, one slot. And he moved the Espions up. Um, and Eden, you can talk about that game a little bit first. Yeah, so the Infernapes, they brought Heliosk, Metagross, Drampa, Armaldo, Greninja, and Armistar. Uh, I think one interesting thing that I noticed from watching the game is they didn't bring any rain. They actually brought Sunny Day versus a team that we've seen appreciate Sunny Day. Um, which I thought was just a scary thing in general to do instead of having the weather battle uh, and trying to fight for superiority there in center of ground. They just decided to cave to the weather effect and then try to build a team around that. Uh, I think that was possibly a really big mistake um, just because they don't have enough Sun Mons to make it worthwhile with Shrifty, 
uh, and Venusaur both getting chlorophyll, like that's just puts him in a really bad position that he's setting up his opponent's team, uh, which is never a really good thing to do under any circumstance. Okay, so I think I'm giving him credit for that because I think that was a really great meme bringing Sun <laughs> against the Sun team. Um, so kudos to you, Spencer. Uh, not to mention, he does have a Sun Abuser on his team. Shoutouts to Heliolisk. Uh, yeah. But I don't know if I'd call uh, it an abuser, quote unquote. It gets it has solar power. No, it what? does, but I don't know if I'd consider that abusing the Sun. Bruh, fake fan. Uh, anyway, so he lost to a uh, team that only had Scarfed Mons, <laughs> so that's kind of sad. Um, and ironically, that is mostly because he didn't bring rain, <laughs> um, so he didn't have a way to outspeed them. And the fact that his team, again, for two weeks in a row was entirely grounded, and his opponent had two ground types that were all just spamming ground moves, who oh boy was he in for a rough time. I don't think he actually played that poorly, but it was nothing like crazy good. Cause like, think... sorry, I didn't go mean ahead. to cut you off. No, go ahead. I was gonna say I think the one misplay that I really had a concern about was leaving in Greninja versus the Hitmonchan. If that was a banded Hitmonchan, even for a meme, Mock Punch kills. If it's Scarfed, Drain Punch kills. So it, he just wasn't a bad spot. That is extremely true. Um... I was gonna say something about maybe he had extra sensory, but yeah, if Mach Punch kills him, that was a bad play. Um, and I, I think at that point he was just like really sold on the idea of getting Greninja to battle bond once, which he unfortunately did not the entire time that he had it. Um, I think it, I think it did it once. No, it did it once on Paul's team. Ah, and the, then they traded Greninjas, and it, he didn't get a kill with it. Uh, <laughs> but. Back to his play, it was nothing crazy good, and like legitimately, due to Paul bringing only Scarf Mons and him bringing a meme that was cool but not that good, uh, he didn't actually have a good matchup. Um, so he played overall pretty predictably as well, which has been a problem with him the past two weeks. Like it's the game that I think he played the best this season was the one against you, Seth, where he just like mm -hmm. did off the wall stuff to try to catch you off guard, and it worked for like half the game. Mm -hmm. um, he also had very nice nicknames. I love Armadildo. Um, <laughs> and also, uh, please let me bond. Uh, but, you know, so you get credit for that, but that doesn't really feed into the power rankings of what we're doing here. He, he played strong late game to close the differential gap. Um, but, like, again, on Team Comp, he, there was nothing he could do. If you're going to, like, straight up analyze this game and rank the team's based on the memes, I understand why Okan moved him down. Because he didn't play as well, but it's it's really not fair to rank teams based on games that didn't matter. Um, overall, his play was much stronger in this league than his has been in the past. He made a lot of strides, especially given he's relatively inexperienced with the format. He kind of fell off near the end, um, and he was really one of the most prone players in the entire league to tilt. Um, that is true. But there were there were plenty of encouraging signs here, so we'll see what he does moving forward. Right. I do want to give a shout out to the Toxic Spikes on the star. I think that was a decent, really good one. Yeah. Uh, so we're going to move on to our next slide. Um, as you guys can see, at number nine, uh, we have a little bit of a discrepancy in this slide in general um, in terms of the rankings. But we're going to start off with the Barbados Bib Barrels uh, at four and six. They did lose to the Colorado Crotons. Um, Rishu, I'll let you start off uh, by talking about their battle. Okay, so this game actually did matter, so I get to analyze it. Um, based on the chronology of how the games were played, uh, breaking the fourth wall, uh, only two of the games actually mattered. We had potential to have like three or four matter, but because my game got played first and that outcome decided whether or not other games mattered, um, this was the only other game that ended up mattering this week. Uh, as far as the Barbados the Barrels goes, their prep was kind of odd. I think the fact that they didn't bring Necrozma to this game is weird. Um, other than that, I guess it was okay. His whole team comp is just kind of, kind of, eh. Um, for the first two turns, the play was fantastic. He had good momentum. Um, he got rid of Mantine. Mantine was a huge problem for his team because he didn't really have any good wall breakers. Um, 
but then he left Muck in against the Seismitoad, and it all just went downhill from there. That was that play right there, leaving Muck in, was the first in a long sequence of misplays that we're now in the middle of. Um, so he lets Muck get chunked. Uh, Milotic loses the item because he stays in uh, again against um, the Seismitoad, or he switches out the turn after Seismitoad when it has no downside to knocking his item off. Um, Milotic stays in again. Finny instead of swapping, even though he has absolutely no way to kill it or damage it at all. Um, he then lets uh, Kingdra set up again. He doesn't have a way to damage Kingdra. Um, so, and then after that, the one play, the one turn where you do miss Draco Meteor, uh, he doesn't take advantage of it. He doesn't click his own dragon move or any other move that had a shot at killing. Um, which I think I chalked up due to Till. It might be that he didn't have one, which would be bad prep. Uh, and then it just steamrolled into a loss. So he he got tilted by the crits, which is understandable if you don't know the mechanic, which we both learned something this week because I actually Googled it after the game and apparently Focus Energy sco uh, Focus Energy Scopeland's Kingdra has a 100% crit rate, yeah. which is totally busted, but whatever. Uh, but the main thing he fell victim to this week was the chief problem in his draft from the beginning, which is that it's criminally slow. So, like, you didn't even need rain. Kingdra outs naturally outsped everything on his team besides Dugtrio. And who's going to bring Dugtrio against Mono Water? So, the script from this game was completely flipped um, from a game you played week one, um, which really kind of tells the story of the season, because he played really well his first two weeks. Um, but it just kind of petered out towards the end in the games in which he did actually manage to play because he had a bunch of scheduling conflicts as well. Um, so hopefully next season, assuming he comes back, he can recapture what made him successful early in the season. But as for this game, it just it, it just was not a good it was not a good look. Yeah, I think a big thing for me when I was playing against this team, my biggest fear. Uh, out of all of his mons versus the Kridra is that Alolan Muk. Uh, it is the only mon he has that lives with rocks on the field, and so as soon as I got that Earthquake off, he stayed in for the wrong turn. That turn, and then not clicking his dragon move on Gudra are the two turns that lost him this game. Without those, he had a chance. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I feel like the biggest misplay was... Not necessarily staying in, but realize or not understanding that he needed the muck in order to beat the Kingdra. Yeah, a big part of it is like hindsight's twenty twenty. So for him, unfortunately, we'll talk more about this in my prep, but he wouldn't have known that Alone Muck was so heavily important for mm -hmm. my plan. Um, and I'll explain my plan when I get to me. Uh, but for now. Rishu pointed it out. Like every single one of his mods, except Dugdrio, is slower than Kingdra, base without Swift Swim. Uh, that's a concern. And then his team is very specially defensive heavy. If he brings Necrozma, uh, and then he also brings Gudra and Alolan Muk, like those are three solid mods that are going to be extremely hard for me to muscle past three times in a row. Okay. Uh, any final thoughts from either of you? I think I said my bit. Yeah. All right. Um, so moving on, we're actually going to cover the Durham Granvilles because Ocon did have them at number 9. Uh, Rishu, you had them up at number 6 because, again, you didn't move uh, move any of the rankings. Uh, but, Eden, you can talk about their game a little bit first. So with the Granvilles, uh, they brought a decent team, as we talked about. They had no check for the Tornadas. Uh, because of that, that's definitely a big like uh, concern, being such a strong Pokemon that your opponent... If you're under the assumption they're memeing, this team probably wouldn't have been too bad. Um, if any mon on this team had a focus sash, things could have been way different as well. Um, I definitely think a single mon on a team with focus sash, especially in a draft league, is always worthwhile. It can help stop these kind of chains that are just very terrifying. Um, but that's just another hindsight 2020, and there's not really a huge way to avoid that or prep preemptively for that either. Um, I think that's the big things I really have to say about the Grand Bulls is Make sure you have a Pokemon for every Pokemon on your opponent's team that they can bring. Uh, and I'm a big fan of having a Focus Sash mine somewhere on your team, just that way you know you can live one move. All right. So, like, yeah, 
she brought a lot of high tier memes this game. I don't I don't think we gave enough credit for this. All right, laser focus explode metagross. Ooh. <laughs> I don't even know what laser focus Ooh. does. Makes your next move an auto crit. Oh Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, she also brought physical Blacephalon. We saw, we managed to see Scarf beat up Crocodile. I don't even know what the Mian Chow set was, but I'm sure it was great. Um, <laughs> but yeah, as you talked about, if she had really like been playing to win this game, I am positive Altaria, and definitely, maybe not Altaria, because she likes Altaria a lot, but definitely Zangus would have been a Tornado's counter. Because if she had a Tornado's counter, like the rest of her team just straight up is decent against the Espeon's team because of just the composition of basically his entire all of his good mods being weak to darker ghost um but she did meme and she didn't get to use most of them which feels really bad man um she fell into the same kind of trap as far as her play goes that we have criticized the teddy Ursus for actually in the past where she was like just playing her own game she was playing a meme and not playing to win um so i think if she had been focused a little bit more on what Tornadus was doing to her or trying to do, then maybe she could have killed it earlier. Um, I don't know. That's kind of eh. As far as bringing Sashes goes, I'm not sure bringing Sashes is always the answer. I think I can count on one hand the amount of Sashes I've brought in all of my games across League format. Um, just because Hazard is such a big deal. But uh, to your point, I, Despions haven't brought a ton of entry Hazards this season. They don't really have great entry Hazard setters besides Drachi. So... I kind of 50-50 on that one. Um, so, altogether, play prep led to a really lopsided loss, but at that point, like, their game, they knew from the beginning wasn't going to matter, which is why she do his hardcore memeing. Um, and it kind of is what it is. She got off to a really promising start. Her play through, like, the first six or seven weeks was top, like, among the top teams in the league. Um, and she had, a, like, in my opinion, the hardest schedule in the league um, by a decent amount. So I would have liked to have seen what she what would have happened if, and because he's not here, I can say this: if she had switched schedules with Okan, uh, how her, how their records would have been. But uh, the quality of play was decent up till the end. After the week before her wedding was the 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 week where her play started to decline. So I think we can all we can all see where where the uh, where where it went wrong. Um, not gonna hold it against her. She, I still ranked her at six. I didn't feel right moving her down. I do still think her play from the beginning of the season holds her up as one of the better teams in the league. It's unfortunate that she didn't make the playoffs. We'll see what happens uh, if slash when she comes back. So, I don't know. All right. Uh, moving on at number eight, Rishu, you had the Hartford Herdiers, and they were at number seven for Ocon. Um, so you can talk about their battle as it was you playing them. All right, first off, I'm, like, really surprised Okan moved them down. Um, I can see why, because, like, he did lose, but I, I am kind of surprised by that. Uh, I kept him here mostly because, all right, so, like, backing up, he made a decision in prep. I think he and Okan prepped together this week um, that I don't typically approve of, which is I'm going to mind game the heck out of Sam right now, and uh, I'm just going to bring all the stuff that I've underutilized. <laughs> Because he's not going to expect it. Um, so I think he literally brought a Requited and his next five least used Mons. Um, <laughs> Which, like when, you, when you look at the team, is crazy because that consists of Raikou, Lando, I, Haxorus. Like, how do you underuse those? Yeah, like, that probably speaks to a larger problem that he had in building earlier in the season and why he started off 0-5 or 0-6 or whatever. 0-4. Oh, and four. I Getting forgot that, that two weeks in a row. He was one and four, though, right? He was one and four, yeah. Yeah, one and four, one and five, whatever it was. Yeah. Um, so that led, like, he had a really good matchup on Team Preview based on how I prepped. Um, I don't know that he knew that, and it didn't end up mattering that much, but that, that, that was not something that I would advise anybody else to ever do again, but it worked out. Um, so... As far as his play goes, his play, I was not a huge fan upon rewatching it of his play. Um, just because it was really predictable. Uh, he didn't really make any misplays per se, which is something that had dogged him earlier in the season. But he didn't like 
make any kind of nutty reads of his own that could have set up his win con better. Um, he benefited from hacks a fair amount, but like, what do you you run discharge? What do you expect to happen, right? Like, I mean, that's why he got you run some, discharge. Yeah, he, I mean, he could have run Thunderbolt. Actually, Thunderbolt wouldn't have made a difference because it also didn't two-shot Porygon or Vaporeon. Thanks, Vaporeon. Uh, but we'll get to that when we talk to me. Uh, he got he got hexed a little bit in return. I got two crits. Both of them technically mattered, but not. Eh. Um, he dealt with the hacks on both sides, I think, pretty nicely. He took a lot of advantage of the paras that he did get, and he managed to work around the two crits to the best that he could. Uh, ultimately, he just got outplayed. That's really how it happened. Um, he couldn't set up his win con properly. I don't think he pro he understood the conditions that were needed. Like, he didn't make enough of an effort to try to get stack attack out of this game. Um, and that's that's how he lost. So the season, his season overall ended up being like a tale of two halves. And the second one, once he like made all those transactions and found his footing with his new team, he played, like, even... His prep was better, yes, but his play was demonstrably better. Um, the misplays decreased significantly, and I'm just I'm excited to see what happens next. So even though he like barely missed out on the playoffs this season, I think these are good signs. I can agree with a lot of that. Um, I think a big uh, misplay that I thought was a pretty big deal is when Vaporeon came in against the Araquanid, uh, he swapped out immediately. I think that would have been a perfect turn to set up Toxic. Um, but he already had the Paralyze on Vaporeon. I think that if Vaporeon comes out, you really want that Toxic on Vaporeon because it's such a hard mon to muscle pass. That with Paralyzing it, with Raikou, I don't think that was the proper choice. I think it may have been better to try to get it in front of Araquanid because you knew it had Water Absorb, you knew he had Liquidation, uh, and force that Toxic on it so that way it will die eventually. Uh, that is that it. Any closing thoughts? Yo, that was go. really th that that thought right. That was really big brain that never occurred to me. <laughs> you could do that. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. It was just like one of the first things I saw as soon as I was watching the replay. I was like, why do you swap? Like he knows he has toxic. Like he swapped into Raikou and then got the paralyzed instead. Like Vaporeon's a special tank. Raikou's not muscling past this mon. Like it's not happening, and it didn't. And that's what lost him the game. Vaporeon got the crit at the very end, and that crit mattered. And that's what lost that turn. And it's so subtle. It's such a small thing that maybe hindsight was 2020, but remembering that Vaporeon is especially defensive on bringing in even electric special attacker might not always be the best idea. And with that, uh, we're going to move on to Rishi, your number seven, and Okan's number six. Uh, Eden, your team itself, the Colorado Crawdons. So I'll let you start and talk about a little bit your prep and your pr and your play. Awesome. Okay. So the first two things I noticed when I was prepping for his team were, one, he had a lot more special defensive mons than he had physical defensive. So if you look at my team, uh, for Alligator, Sharpedo, and Seismitoad are all prepped for physical offense, uh, which is the intent. I mean, it's meant to be that way because his team has a lot less special defensive, or a lot less physical defensive mods. Uh, the other thing I knew as well is because Kingdra can outspeed his entire team, uh, if he doesn't bring a Choice Scarf, my big concern was I need to make sure that Kingdra does not die to, die to Gudra. And so that's why Misty Terrain is up. My 100% plan was to weaken Muck below 40, uh, below 60% health so Kingdra can get the one-hit KO. If Rocks are up, Kingdra one-hit KO by Lodic. And then if uh, Misty Terrain's up, Kingdra can get the setup and Gudra can't stop him. Outside of that, it's just sweep out from there, hope I don't miss. The one turn I missed, I literally shouted out loud and people freaked out around me. <laughs> and I was super worried because that Gudra is terrifying to muscle past. Mm -hmm. I did realize, though, that the Gudra does have a pretty low physical defense. So as long as Sharpedo is able to come in, set up his speed, turn two, get him with an Ice Fang, we're done. And then he just continues to sweep from there. Um, but his, his two big misplays, Muck was hindsight 2020. He couldn't have really saw that without like some really scary serious prep beforehand. And unfortunately for him, he played perfectly into my plan, allowing me to weaken Muck, get rocks up for Myelotic, and then get up Misty Terrain so I could set up Kingdra so he wouldn't die to Gudra. All right. Like, to me, 
leaving Muck in on a ground type is a misplay. I don't really care what the ground type is. It doesn't matter that much. Um, Muck does get Giga Drain. Does get the Giga oh, oh, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> but... Which you didn't have. I, yeah. <laughs> uh, so, anyway. Yeah, he left it in on size of Toad. Muck being a bulkier mod with no form of recovery besides, like, I guess if you're MV, you can run Gluttony and a Figgy Bear every week. <laughs> um, but, unfortunately... Uh, the coach of Barbados but Barrels is not MV, um, so he didn't do that. Uh, as far as your team goes, uh, we didn't get to see a whole lot of your prep. I mean, looking at the six mods you brought, yeah, I agree with all of them. I didn't think rain was necessary, again, because the speed. His team, you didn't need your rain sweepers to have Swift, to have access to Swift Slim this week, unless one of them was Corvus, because Corvus is slow, but... It, your team, like, naturally outpaced his, which is wild, because your team's kind of slow, too. Um, Kritdra was obviously a very solid bring. Um, as far as things that we've talked about before, we told you, we buy it, like, several times. you got to bring different stuff in order to succeed. You have brought Kritdra before, but you didn't get it set up. And so anyone who was not watching, like, paying close attention to what you were saying in the server um, would not have known that and known to prep for it. Um, not that there is a lot of prep for Kritdra, besides, like, being faster than it. Um, but, so that was a good bring. Um, you got your opponent to, like you said, just fall right into your plan. Damaging Muck was really all you needed to do to win, besides not miss. Um, Dracoing Milotic on the last turn of terrain, I want to point out, is also, like, really low-key a very big brain play. <laughs> because it baits him to not recover and stay in uh, since the terrain actually weakens Draco Meteor um, and all the grounded dragon moves you use while it's up. Uh, so that guarantees that he dies next turn, essentially, which is a high-level mind game. Uh, and from there, he just picked up an easy win. Obviously, HP Fire and Ice Beam were two very good uh, subsequent... Not subsequent, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, secondary moves to have on the set alongside Kritra. Uh, so you clinched the playoff spot, you rode the wave, Brosidon, King of the Brosian, into the playoffs. Six seed. Very exciting matchup coming up with our third seeded team. I mean, breaking the fourth wall, they played, but I don't want to spoil anything. So, watch I'm, that when it goes up on Seth's channel. I'm very disappointed in that pun you just made. It was don't, perfect. Thank you. Very disappointed. Perfect. <laughs> um, anything else to add? No, I think that's really about it. Um, hindsight's twenty twenty, uh, but make sure to double prep beforehand. All right. Uh, moving on to our top five at this point, because we kind of went over the number six teams as well. Uh, at number five, both Okan and Rishu had the Blooming Team Blooms yet again. And if I do say so myself, this was probably the most entertaining battle of the week. Um, and Rishu, I'll let you talk about it first. You're all right. So first thing you got to do is you got to click the subscribe button down below if you haven't already. <laughs> all right. Then what you're going to do is you're going to pause this video. You're going to open up another tab. Uh, if you're on mobile, I guess finish the video first. If you're signed in, you can like save to watch it later or whatever. But you go, you go right now and you go click on Seth's video to hear the commentary because just watching the replay doesn't do it justice, even though watching the replay is kind of hype. Um, but anyway, so the Bloomington Glooms as you have already seen, they blew up this week. They popped off, especially in the first two turns. Haha, <laughs> good puns. Anyway, he brought very glorious memes. Final Gambit Shedinja. You, you, you gotta be a special kind of person to bring the Final Gambit Shedinja to a game. Uh, and we, we discovered this week that the coach of the Bloomington Glooms is that kind of person. Um, I, we knew that beforehand. <laughs> okay, we knew, but we didn't have empirical evidence. Uh, and now we do. And then you got to be another special kind of person to follow that up immediately by exploding. So, <laughs> credits to him, Shedinja Azelf. But for the record, he did not have three other moves on either of those sets. Those, that was it. Um, <laughs> I'm pretty sure Azelf was also banded. So, like, <laughs> big brain. Uh, he won. He actually ended up winning this game. Um, with a slightly non-meme set, like set up Zoroark is a thing. However, Zoroark is a meme mon, and it got set up by another meme mon with Smeargle. 
Uh, we didn't even get to see his best meme, which was Kiram White at level 75 because you can't make it lower uh, with only Hail and Endeavor, um, which was another genius meme to try to get brought to 1 HP and then Endeavor kill you with Hail. Big brain. Uh, just all around like a great week, you know? Good, good prep. Properly memed. Uh, play actually did feed really well into his like two possible win cons. Because like, you know, you're right? Like if your infernape is not defensive and isn't pie up, like if your infernape is not that set, Cycle Cut's gonna kill him, and then he wins, uh, unless you have like HP Fire Weavile. Um, actually, he was faster because he had the agility. Yo, that was such a big brain meme. Oh my god. Uh, <laughs> But he, his play fed into his win. The fact that he won, I don't think is actually representative that he played better than you, Seth. Because by this point, right, because I had already played my game, this game didn't matter. Yeah. Um, so neither of you were really playing to win. Uh, but he, I can tell you I was like personally in the room with him when he won this game. He popped off. He popped off louder than when he won the championship in our other league. Like, it was, <laughs> it was really hype. Um... In doing this, he clinched the fifth spot. He's currently, like, he came on this sh uh, as the first guest analyst to this show week three. He was one and two. He said he was going to win out. Um, he was very confident when he said that. The next week, he forfeited. Uh, so he was one and three. But since then, he is now six and four, and the only game he lost was pretty objectively due to hacks. So he is one of the hottest teams in the league. I think outside of the one team that is currently undefeated, this is the team that you would least like to see. Uh, given how he's been prepping and playing least recently, so I'm I'm excited to see the trajectory of this season as it finishes up. Yeah, I mean th you got a lot of the really big points that are really important. Uh, his team was hilarious. It was well played. Um, two awesome different setup options with Sword Dance on uh, Zorak and then Agility on Smirigo. Both really funny. Both really good. Uh, and unfortunately, we didn't get to see Curium. Uh, but I think that's fine. He did really well. I think even for a meme, even though we may say nobody's playing a win, we're still playing a win if we're memeing. Uh, and I think he still, he pulled it off well. Uh, explosions is the best move, especially with Choice Band, so that's okay. Fair enough. Pretty good analysis. Um, <laughs> so on to our number four slot, we have, uh, yet again, the Twin Leaf Town Torteras. Uh, did not move for anyone, as, uh, as did the Bloomington Gloom, so... Seven and three, they did win their match this week. Um, and Eden, you can talk about their match first. All right, so Twin Leaf Town Tortera is uh, they they brought some meme. Uh, everything was choice scarf. Uh, that is pretty big meme, uh, all things considered. But when you really look at his team too, like they're really fast mons, and they got decent attack and special attack stats. So bringing everything choice scarf, pretty solid meme. Um, and then with defensive bonds like Priscilla and Mudsdale, it worked out really well for him. Um, no sun, so he couldn't get uh, the benefits of his opponent bringing a sun meme team, which is really funny, all things considered. Uh, and then from there, I think he did play well. Um, having to deal with Toxic was always really annoying, but he muscled past it, and uh, by the end of it, I ended up punching the win, which is good. Okay, so... He texted me beforehand and asked me which kind of meme he should run this week. He t he was between Mono Scarf and Mono Verlissify sets. Oh. And I told him to run Mono Verlissify sets because he has Venusaur on his team and I wanted to see Fury Cutter Venusaur. But he didn't do that. He brought a better meme instead. Uh, so Mono Scarf was a great meme like we talked about. His opponent's team comp actually made it like really effective since, again, Ray not being brought means that his Scarf Resolve has fed the entire team. Um, they all do have decent speed stats, with the exception of, ironically, the horse. Um, so, whatever. The fact that Mudsdale is so slow never ceases to annoy me, but his play was pretty good. He, His whole playstyle of like making everything into a mind game where you predict what your opponent's going to do. Turret works out really well when your opponent's playing so predictably, um, or as predictably, at least, as his opponent was playing this week. So he played around those predictions and managed to set up his win very effectively. He didn't, like, actually have a win con, but his matchup was favorable enough to, like, just spam ground moves until Coco could come in. Um, 
So he was able to seal out the win. He heads in like this season was so weird. <laughs> right, because he played better in some of his losses than he did in his wins. Uh, he beat some teams that he, you know, nobody expected him to beat. He lost to some teams that nobody really expected him to lose to. Uh, so it was just rife with inconsistency. So we'll see which Paul shows up in the first round of the playoffs. He plays just not a matchup I would wish on anybody. But as we've seen, he can beat anyone on any given week. Uh, he's capable of out prepping anyone. He's capable of outplaying anyone. So we'll just kind of see where it goes. I'm excited. All right. Um, and we are going to move on to our final uh, final set of rankings, our top three. Um, Rishi, we'll start with your team, the Orlando Apollo Toads, who you yet again had at number three. And Ocon moved you up to the number two slot. All right, so like I'm going to start by saying I understand why Ocon moved me and moved you down because you like lost to memes and I like won in an actual game. But again, losing to memes, I don't see as a bad thing. All right. I, I respect people that lose to memes. Um, as far as my game goes, I like lost my win con at team preview, which is kind of annoying uh, because I brought a sub combined Cafagagus and I'm like, I'm going to set up all over this Norlax. Cool boy. Is he, is he not going to like that? Uh, and failing that, I'm going to set up on, on Ninetales, and I'm going to set up on, uh, on Hitmontop, I'm going to set up on Necrozma, oh boy, and then none of them came, and I got really, really sad really, really quickly. Uh, but other than that, my prep was decent. I had answers to the most important stuff, I think, that was brought, and even the stuff that wasn't brought. Um, after I realized that Vaporeon was a valid Raikou answer, which I thought was pretty funny. <laughs> Uh, I played pretty well through this game, actually. This is one of my better play games, looking back on it. Because I, I, like, had to play around hacks and, like, weigh the risk-reward of switching things in on Discharge. Um, so ultimately, yeah, as you pointed out, we were talking about my opponent, Data Rest, uh Getting the Discharge pair on Vapor Round was one of the best things that happened to me in this game. Because, like, not being able to be toxic maybe won't be this game. Um... And once I realized that that was the case, and that I could switch in on Raikou consistently, and that his Landorus wasn't life orbed, like this was, this was an ease. This was like, the path to victory became much clearer. Um, as far as the rest of my play goes, I made pretty pretty nice uh, doubles around with Blaziken to set up the end game. Most notably, the turn that Raikou died, um, and having to weigh the risk reward of if Blaziken gets parried, it'll kind of suck. But if I'm in, this is the only... Like, if a Poreon is in when Raikou dies, he sets up with Haxorus and he can win. Um, and this is also the most use I'm going to get out of Blaziken for the rest of this game, so I might as well try. Uh, so that was very worth it to force the 50-50 that followed the next turn, because he had a Z-move, so he had to predict whether or not he, um, I was going to predict or going to protect. So if he had Z-moved me there, I mean, it would have been better for him. Um, if he, I had protected, setting up was the right play. So... It was it was a very 50-50 turn for him. I won that 50-50, made the low kick that I had to in order to not like eliminate his win con, but make it much more difficult since he couldn't Oko Stakataka. Um, and then the end game, I just made the correct switches. I probably could have squeezed out one more differential if I had like reasonably expected what his Zard set would be. But I became like really irrationally at the last second worried it was going to be a Belly Drum Flame Charge Charizard. And if I had switched out with my Absol there and that was the case, I would have lost. Um, so I was forced to stay in with Absol, uh, is what it is. I, in winning this game, clinched a bye through the first round. So that's neat. I don't like playing first round games. I mentioned that earlier. Um, as far as my season goes, I'm pretty comfortable with my play so far, but I don't really feel like I've been improving as, as far as team building goes over the course of the season. Um, so I'm gonna rectify that. I'm gonna I'm gonna bring some some hot stuff in the playoffs, boys. Better better prepare, buckle in, prepare your anuses. It's coming. Pretty good review. Um, overall, I think you you played really well. Um, the staying in with Absol wasn't a bad idea. Um, it would have killed if he had not two Z mods, which I guess ended up being good prep, I guess. Um, and then the other thing, like when you're talking about like paralyzing uh, Vaporeon being one of the best things that's happened to you, I've run in tournaments before Flame Orb Vaporeon 
just so that way I can't get toxic. Because I'm like, okay, like the opponent I'm playing against has stall, they have toxic. I want I want to make sure I don't get toxic. Like that sounds like a good idea. And because burn does nothing to Vaporeon, paralyze does nothing to Vaporeon most of the time, unless you get really bad hacks. And by the end of that game, it came down to who's going to get the better hacks. Is he going to get three turns of paralyzation, or are you going to get the crit? Uh, and that's what it came down to. So overall, a lot closer than it needed to be. I definitely think he could have secured the win, though, uh, if he would have just toxic Vaporeon on that super early turn, turn 11, I think it was, um, and then go from there. Uh, you did bring a good team. Uh, no serious complaints about your prep or uh, moves that I saw, so good job. And the final analysis that we will have for this final Power Rankings video, uh, Okan moved me down to number three, and Rishu, you kept me at number two. Uh, so, Ian, you can start with what you thought of my game and prep. Yeah, uh, prep-wise, like, I think your whole team's really good. I don't have an issue with most of your team. Uh, leading with eight with rocks, super, no issues there. Uh, getting final gambit, so that way now you can't uh, love that focus sash. It sucks, feels bad, man. I'll fall into Rishu's uh, terminology now. Um, I think your, your one misplay uh, that for me, uh, when I was watching the game, I was just like, why? Like, wh why did we do that? is when Zorak Comet came in as Smurgle, you have Infernape in, and you swap him out for Weavile. We know Infernape had Vacuum Wave. Vacuum Wave two hit KOs, both Smurgle and Zorak. There was no reason to swap, I didn't feel. Like, I, that was your win. Like, you could have stopped it, and then you didn't, and it fell apart. Um, I'm not sure why that decision was made to swap into a Sleeping Mod versus a Mod who's going to be setting up for somebody else. But that, I think, was what lost you the game, is you could have stayed in with eight and then taken the win. All right. So, like, yeah, you got memed. That feels bad. Feels bad. Feels really bad, man. Um, you had some good memes yourself. I don't think those should go unsaid. Uh, I like the Piapa Berry Infernape, the nice defensive ape. Because he, he also, the entire game, was, like, legitimately confused as to whether or not Zorak would be faster. Um, which was kind of funny. Uh, the, he, your sets weren't, the Weavile was pretty cool. Um, Nasty Pot Weavile, that's something I thought about doing last season. I don't remember if I actually did it. I know I've advised someone else who drafted Weavile to do it once, which was also a good meme. Um, the, the Scizor and the Rhyperior were decent memes. I mean, they weren't memes, but they were decent sets. Um, the, the Pissimian, I mean... You really bet a lot that he would bring the Aloe and the Gastrodon because those mods have been like half carrying his team for the past few weeks. Yeah, I was honestly, uh, I was honestly expecting an offensive Aloe when he said he was gonna meme, and I was like hard counting on that. So, if you guys didn't watch my video, I'll just kind of explain what the set was. It was, I believe, it was block, workup, energy ball, and taunt. Taunt. And, your and last had, yeah, and it had Gracium Z. And the point was to be able to switch into Gastro or Aloe, uh, taunt them so they couldn't do anything. I'm sorry, block so they couldn't switch, taunt them so they couldn't do anything, and then work up until I can Z Energy Ball and take it out. And I was hard counting on one of those things to come. And then once they, once I didn't see them, Pissimian was completely useless. So yeah, it was a good meme, but you you got you got out memed. I did. I did. I watched like possibly half your, your video. Possibly your worst played game, I think, because you like miscalculated a bunch of stuff. You didn't understand that he was setting up and he was like actually going to win when he finished, which is why you switched out. Um, you also didn't, the turn you waked up, the turn you woke up, you set up another nasty plot. You didn't focus blast him for some reason. I have no idea why. Whack. Um, but. You didn't realize you lost until it was too late, but you weren't like taking this game super seriously. You were obviously sad in the video, but it wasn't it wasn't that serious. Yeah. Um, it's a meme game; it's excusable. But what's not excusable is if the same type of issues happen in the playoffs. Um, again, not spoiling anything, but you got to be careful of that after clinching the three seed and facing our good friend, the King of the Brotion, in the first round. So, gotta be on the lookout. That it goes up next week. Can't wait. Huzzah. Man, man says no spoilers. Um, <laughs> so anyway, as you guys can see at the number one slot, yet again is the Bougie Cavaliers. They did cap off the undefeated 
regular season. Uh, we have yet to see what will happen in the playoffs, and I'm definitely looking forward to see uh, if their play and prep is going to be able to reflect what it has been in the regular season. Um, and honestly, as Rishu did say, their schedule was not the most difficult. And I'm curious to see how his play and his team will hold up against some of the heavy hitters in the league in the playoffs. So with that, uh, that concludes the final Power Rankings video for Season 2 of the RPL. Um, we will most likely, I'm not going to guarantee it, but we will most likely be doing a type of season recap video. Basically just visiting where, where the team started, um, what the teams looked like, what the players looked like and were thinking, and then where they finished up. So in terms of uh, power ranking, in terms of standings, whether they made the playoffs, how far they got in the playoffs, and overall how well they played throughout the season, how much they improved. So teams like, I'll just take the uh, the Indiana Infernames for example. At the beginning of the season, they didn't have a whole lot of experience in the draft league format. They had some, uh, but hadn't done very well. And as we kind of stated in a lot of the power rankings is their play and prep have definitely improved and that is something uh, an example of what would be noted and talked about a little bit more in depth in that type of season recap video we will also be recapping uh, the playoffs in that video so that will be up pretty soon i'm not exactly sure when we have to see when the playoffs are going to end because we might do that a little early um, rather than just waiting a couple weeks to do the matches weekly um, but keep an, keep an eye out for those videos um, leave your own rankings down below in the comments. Let me know what you thought of the power rankings this season. Um, also, let me know what you guys think we could have done to make the power rankings better. If there's something you would have liked to see, uh, maybe a little bit more stuff, graphics, whatever, on screen, how we could change the graphics, whatever, whatever you guys think, let me know in the comments below. Um, other than that, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. Um, we'll see you guys in the next one.